in political and social sciences. Communism is a social, political, and economic ideology and movement whose ultimate goal is the establishment of the communist society, which is a socio-economic order structured upon the common ownership of the means of production and the absence of social classes, money, and the state. Communism includes a variety of schools of thought, which broadly include Marxism, anarchism, and the political ideologies grouped around both. All these hold in common the analysis that the current order of society stems from its economic system, capitalism, that in this system, there are two major social classes the working class, who must work to survive, and who make up a majority of society, and the capitalist class, a minority who derive profit from employing the proletariat, through private ownership of the means of production, and that political, social and economic conflict between these two classes will trigger a fundamental change in the economic system, and by extension a wide-ranging transformation of society. The primary element which will enable this transformation, according to this analysis, is the social ownership of the means of production. History Early communism The origins of communism are debatable, and there are various historical groups, as well as theorists, whose beliefs have been subsequently described as communist. German philosopher Karl Marx saw primitive communism as the original hunter-gatherer state of humankind from which it arose. For Marx, only after humanity was capable of producing surplus did private property develop. The idea of a classless, egalitarian society first emerged in ancient Greece. Plato, writing in the Republic around 380 BC, described it as a state where people shared all their property, wives, and children. The private and individual is altogether banished from life and things which are by nature private, such as eyes and ears and hands, have become common, and in some way see and hear and act in common, and all men express praise and feel joy and sorrow on the same occasions, in the history of Western thought. Certain elements of the idea of a society based on common ownership of property can be traced back to ancient times. Examples include the Spartacus slave revolt in Rome. The 5th century Mazduk movement in Persia has been described as communistic for challenging the enormous privileges of the noble classes and the clergy criticizing the institution of private property and for striving for an egalitarian society. At one time or another, various small communist communities existed, generally under the inspiration of scripture, in the medieval Christian church. For example, some monastic communities and religious orders shared their land and other property. Communist thought has also been traced back to the work of 16th-century English writer Thomas More. In his treatise Utopia, More portrayed a society based on common ownership of property, whose rulers administered it through the application of reason. In the 17th century, communist thought surfaced again in England, where a Puritan religious group known as the Diggers advocated the abolition of private ownership of land. Edward Bernstein, in his 1895 Cromwell and Communism argued that several groupings in the English Civil War, especially the Diggers, espoused clear communistic, agrarian ideals, and that Oliver Cromwell's attitude to these groups was at best ambivalent and often hostile. Criticism of the idea of private property continued into the Age of Enlightenment of the 18th century, through such thinkers as Jean-Jacques Rousseau in France. Later, following the upheaval of the French Revolution, communism emerged as a political doctrine. Various social reformers in the early 19th century founded communities based on common ownership, but unlike many previous communist communities, they replaced the religious emphasis with a rational and philanthropic basis. Notable among them were Robert Owen, who founded New Harmony in Indiana, and Charles Fourier, whose followers organize other settlements in the United States such as Brook Farm. Later in the 19th century, 
Karl Marx described these social reformers as utopian socialists to contrast him with his program of scientific socialism. Other writers described by Marx as utopian socialists included Saint Simon. In its modern form, communism grew out of the socialist movement of 19th century Europe as the Industrial Revolution advanced. Socialist critics blamed capitalism for the misery of the proletariat, a new class of urban factory workers who labored under often hazardous conditions. Foremost among these critics were Marx and his associate Friedrich Engels. In 1848, Marx and Engels offered a new definition of communism and popularized the term in their famous pamphlet The Communist Manifesto. Modern communism The 1917 October Revolution in Russia set the conditions for the rise to state power of Lenin's Bolsheviks, which was the first time any avowedly communist party reached that position. The revolution transferred power to the All-Russian Congress of Soviets, in which the Bolsheviks had a majority. The event generated a great deal of practical and theoretical debate within the Marxist movement. Marx predicted that socialism and communism would be built upon foundations laid by the most advanced capitalist development. Russia, however, was one of the poorest countries in Europe with an enormous, largely illiterate peasantry and a minority of industrial workers. Marx had explicitly stated that Russia might be able to skip the stage of bourgeois rule. Other socialists also believed that a Russian revolution could be the precursor of workers' revolutions in the West. The moderate Mensheviks opposed Lenin's Bolshevik plan for socialist revolution before capitalism was more fully developed. The Bolshevik's successful rise to power was based upon the slogans such as peace, bread, and land, which tapped the massive public desire for an end to Russian involvement in the First World War, the peasants' demand for land reform, and popular support for the Soviets. The Second International had dissolved in 1916 over national divisions, as the separate national parties that composed it did not maintain a unified front against the war, instead generally supporting their respective nation's role. Lenin thus created the Third International in 1919 and sent the 21 conditions, which included democratic centralism to all European socialist parties willing to adhere. In France, for example, the majority of the French section of the Workers' International Party split in 1921 to form the French section of the Communist International. Henceforth, the term communism was applied to the objective of the parties founded under the umbrella of the Comintern. Their program called for the uniting of workers of the world for revolution, which would be followed by the establishment of a dictatorship of the proletariat as well as the development of a socialist economy. During the Russian Civil War, the Bolsheviks nationalized all productive property and imposed a policy named war communism, which put factories and railroads under strict government control, collected and rationed food, and introduced some bourgeois management of industry. After three years of war and the 1921 Kronstadt Rebellion, Lenin declared the new economic policy in 1921 which was to give a limited place for a limited time to capitalism. The NEP lasted until 1928, when Joseph Stalin achieved party leadership, and the introduction of the five-year plan spelled the end of it. Following the Russian Civil War, the Bolsheviks, in 1922, formed the Union of Soviet Socialist Republics, or Soviet Union, from the former Russian Empire. Following Lenin's democratic centralism, the Leninist parties were organized on a hierarchical basis. With active cells of members as the broad base, they were made up only of elite cadres approved by higher members of the party as being reliable in, completely subject to party discipline. The Great Purge of 1937-1938 was Stalin's attempt to destroy any possible opposition within the Communist Party. In the Moscow trials many old Bolsheviks who had played prominent roles during the Russian Revolution of 1917 
or in Lenin's Soviet government afterwards, including Kamenev, Zinoviev, Rykov, and Bukharin, were accused, pleaded guilty, and executed. Following World War II, Marxist Leninist consolidated power in Central and Eastern Europe, and in 1949, the Communist Party of China, led by Mao Zedong, established the People's Republic of China, which would follow its own ideological path of development following the Sino-Soviet split. Cuba, North Korea, Vietnam, Laos, Cambodia, Afghanistan, Angola, Mozambique and the countries that were part of the former Yugoslavia were among the other countries in the Third World that adopted or imposed a government run by a Marxist-Leninist party at some point. By the early 1980s almost one-third of the world's population lived in states ruled by a self-proclaimed Marxist-Leninist party, including the former Soviet Union and the PRC. Cold War its leading role in the Second World War saw the emergence of the Soviet Union as a superpower, with strong influence over Eastern Europe and parts of Asia. The European and Japanese empires were shattered and communist parties played a leading role in many independence movements. Marxist-Leninist governments modelled on the Soviet Union took power with Soviet assistance in Bulgaria, Czechoslovakia, East Germany, Poland. Hungary and Romania. A Marxist-Leninist government was also created under Marshal Tito in Yugoslavia, but Tito's independent policies led to the expulsion of Yugoslavia from the common form, which had replaced the Comintern, and Titoism was branded deviationist. Albania also became an independent Marxist-Leninist state after World War II. By 1950, the Chinese Marxist-Leninists had taken over all of mainland China. In the Korean War and Vietnam War, communists fought for power in their countries against the United States and its allies, with varying degrees of success. Communists attempted to unite with nationalist and socialist forces against perceived Western imperialism in these poor countries. Communism was seen as a rival of and a threat to Western capitalism for most of the 20th century. This rivalry peaked during the Cold War, as the world's two remaining superpowers, the United States and the Soviet Union, polarized most of the world into two camps of nations. It supported the spread of their respective economic and political systems. As a result, the camps expanded their military capacity, stockpiled nuclear weapons, and competed in space exploration. Dissolution of the Soviet Union in 1985, Mikhail Gorbachev became leader of the Soviet Union and relaxed central control. In accordance with reform policies of Glasnost and Perestroika, the Soviet Union did not intervene as Poland, East Germany, Czechoslovakia, Bulgaria, Romania, and Hungary all abandoned Marxist-Leninist rule by 1990. In 1991, the Soviet Union dissolved. At present, states controlled by Marxist-Leninist parties under a single-party system include the People's Republic of China, Cuba, Laos, and Vietnam. North Korea currently refers to its leading ideology as Jush, which is portrayed as a development of Marxism-Leninism. Communist parties, or their descendant parties, remain politically important in a number of other countries. The South African Communist Party is a partner in the African National Congress-led government. In India, communists lead the governments of three states, with a combined population of more than 115 million. In Nepal, communists hold a majority in the parliament. The Communist Party of Brazil is a part of the parliamentary coalition led by the ruling Democratic Socialist Workers' Party and is represented in the executive cabinet of Dilma Rousseff. The People's Republic of China has reassessed many aspects of the Maoist legacy. It, along with Laos, Vietnam, and, to a lesser degree Cuba, has reduced state control of the economy in order to stimulate growth. Chinese economic reform started in 1978 under the leadership of Deng Xiaoping. Since then, China has managed to bring down the poverty rate from 53% in the Mao era to just 6% in 2001. 
The People's Republic of China runs special economic zones dedicated to market-oriented enterprise, free from central government control. Several other states run by self-proclaimed Marxist-Leninist parties have also attempted to implement market-based reforms, including Vietnam. The ruling stratum of the Soviet Union was by Trotskyism, held to be a bureaucratic caste but not a new ruling class despite their political control.